This is the 3D Idea Builder from Dremel. As you can see, it's a 3D printer. It's actually quite well constructed. I like the, the way that they've done this. It's one of these self-contained printers. Now, you could buy yourself a kit. I, I love the RepRap, but it's kind of open to the elements. You can get a lot of temperature di differences. When you get a, a machine that's like this, that's self-contained, it means you're going to have a more controlled environment. And at least in my experience, it means that you're going to get better prints. Now, some of the other things that I really like about this is that they've made it completely accessible, really easily used by the beginner to the more advanced person. And with a larger build space, it means it's going to give something like the Da Vinci Jr. a run for its money. But you know what, I could sit here and talk all day about uh, the finer points of the 3D Builder, or uh, I could just show you. The 3D Idea Builder is a first-generation single extruder PLA 3D printer from Dremel, the king of DIY and maker tools. Designed for beginning to intermediate builders, the Idea Builder features solid construction, easy access panels, and a 9-inch by 5.9-inch by 5.5-inch maximum build size. In the box is everything you need to start printing. The printer, build tape, a 4 GB SD card, nozzle cleaner, print scraper, USB and power cables, and a spool of filament. Setup takes about 5 minutes, thanks to the easy access provided by the removable top and quick release build platform. The filament spool goes into a well in the base of the idea builder and the filament threads through a guide tube into the extruder. Dremel supplies several panels of heavy duty build tape that is thick enough to be reused several dozen times. And since the build platform has a single hold down tab, it can be slipped in and out in seconds. After power up, you can access the Idea Builder's tool screen and initiate the filament auto load sequence. Every step the printer takes is reported on a color touchscreen that gives you access to all the printer's features, functions, and tools. For proper prints, Dremel has a step by step menu driven procedure for fine tuning the level of the printing bed. Once the tool has been initiated, the build surface moves up to the extruder and you tighten or loosen three adjustment knobs on the bottom of the build platform until the supplied leveling card just barely meets resistance slipping between the print surface and the print head. When the hardware is ready, you need to fire up the Dremel slicing software on a Windows OS X or Ubuntu Linux computer. I tested the software with several STL files from Thingiverse and found the software to work very quickly. I would have liked more control over print densities and support settings, but overall the software did a fine job in getting objects ready for printing. Once the object is ready to print, the software can send the print directly to the idea maker's internal memory, or you can copy the file to an SD card. The idea maker prints layers with 100 micron thickness, and it's designed to work with PLA filament only. There is no DRM on the spool, so you can use your own filaments, though that can void the warranty. But you'll either need to wind your filament on one of the Dremel spools or create an external feed as most generic spools won't fit properly into the filament well. I made over a dozen prints with the Idea Maker and was impressed both by the quality of the prints and the blazing speed. I printed several of my know-how projects and was pleased to see print times cut in more than half over my current 3D printer. Not only that, but I didn't suffer a single jam or misprint during the run. The Dremel 3D Idea Maker is available now. You can find it online for about $900 with a one-year warranty. Let's start with the pros. Uh, I love the color screen. It doesn't sound like it would be a big thing, but the fact that I can run everything from a touch screen does make it easier for me to run not just the prints, but to get through all the tools. I also like the fact that it allows me to manually adjust my leveling. I know a lot of printers out there will do auto leveling, I haven't been completely satisfied with how those work. And this way, it gives me the ability to, to fine tune in case I have been having issues with some of my prints not looking right. I also like the build tape that they use. I'm not a big fan of build tape. People who have watched Know How or, or the new screensavers know that I like putting some sort of slurry, either glue or a sludge, on top of the build plate. And that helps the build to actually stick to the build platform until it's done printing. But this build tape, is actually really, really good. It's not just painter's tape or Kapton tape or whatever you're gonna see. It's a thicker polymer sheet that they say is good for at least 100 prints. I've done about two dozen prints on this so far and I can't tell. I mean, it, it still sticks as good as the day that I put it on there. Uh, now, I will say if, if you do start to run into trouble, what you can do is use isopropyl alcohol and a clean gauze strip to sort of wipe the oils off because really that's what's affecting your prints. It's the oils on your finger. That's also why you see me loading the filament with gloves because what will happen is you'll put the oils on your finger on the filament and as it goes to the hot end, that will stay in there. You give it enough time and that's gonna start to gum it up and you will have to clean out your hot end. 
look at the quality of these prints. I don't know if you can you can get a shot of this, Brian. Maybe on the over. Eh, no, it's it's too far away. But th this is by and far the best quality print that we've had come through the the know how uh, um, uh, no hole. The layers are so close together, 0 .004, 0 0.004 millimeters, that uh, you don't have to do any post-processing shaving. Not only that, because there's, there's such tight tolerances, it means that it's just going to look better. When, the, the, when you get the finished job, you're, you're not going to see all the different layers. I mean, look at that. I, I probably should have printed it in a different uh, color so that it shows up better. But, I mean, even the lettering, normally that would be messed up on, on uh, the DaVinci Junior because what will happen is you've got no support for the layers above it and they just kind of collapse. But again, they've done a really good job with their software. They've done a really good job with the way that this thing is put together. And you end up with a print that is good to go out of the printer. I'm just so, so happy with the quality of the print. So that's, that's another pro. Um, another pro, and this, Dremel probably doesn't want me to talk about this, but if you look inside the box, you can kind of tell that they designed this for dual filament uh, operation, dual extruder operation. There's enough space here to put another head, and there's actually already uh, space built into the build platform to put another spool. So it's my guess that they designed this for dual extruder operation, and then to cut the price, they, they made it single operation. This is probably going to be a know-how project where we're going to try to upgrade it. I, I have no idea if that's possible, but uh, even without that, this is incredibly, incredibly attractive as a beginner device. Now, on the con side, I will say this. They tell you that you should only use Dremel filament, uh, and they say that using non-Dremel PLA will void the warranty. That sounds a little scare tactic-ish to me, but I understand why they did it. They know that if you put bad filament in this, it's going to mess up the printer. But you are not restricted to Dremel filament. This will work with any PLA filament. You just have to make sure you buy high-quality filament. The one thing is that spool, it's a certain size with a certain through hole, and it's not going to be compatible with most of the generic spools that you buy out there. You either have to rewind onto a Dremel spool, or, as I'm going to do, print out an adapter hub so that it will work even with this locking mechanism, or mount it outside of the printer, which I, I actually may end up doing because it seems a lot easier. The only other con, and uh, this, this is kind of shaky because I don't know if I want to make it a con, is the price. It's $900. And $900 does sound like a lot when you look at a printer like the DaVinci Junior, which just dropped to just over $200. You could buy three of those for the price of one of these. But here's the thing. You will probably need three of those because that's about how long they last. Not knocking the DaVinci Junior. I still think it's a phenomenal product for the price, but we have moved on here in the uh, Twit Studios and in the No Hole to needing a device that's going to last us longer than a couple of prints between jams. We need a device that, uh, well, is going to make higher quality prints than what we've come to expect from, from the, the lower cost printers. And for us, I think that's going to be the Dremel 3D Idea Builder. Try, buy, don't buy. For me, the Dremel 3D Idea Builder is a definite buy.